All right, welcome back to Adobe Lightroom Classic. And today we're gonna to take a look at version 13 that Adobe just released and find out what the new features are. And you'll notice up here, we're in the develop module and that's because just about everything that's new is inside of the develop module. So we're gonna take a look at the more simple things and then move on to the more robust items or more interesting items that we have. And then in the end, I'm gonna give you a little bit of feedback or my thoughts on what they've added. So the first one's really simple. We can head on over here to presets and now we can search for presets. If you were to open up all these, it would just be difficult to go through and find everything. So if I come over here and I type the word EDGY, we're gonna get the edgy portraits and then I can just hover over them and see which one I like, all right? So that is searchable presets. The next thing, we're gonna actually apply a couple of these presets and I'm gonna create some snapshots. So a snapshot is just a state in time. So I'm gonna hit this. We'll just go ahead and do this number one and hit okay. And then we'll do something completely different and we'll do this. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit number two. And now when we go hover over the snapshots, they automatically show us what the different versions are. You don't have to click on them, you just hover over them and they show you the different states in time. This also works in the history palette as well. It's saving everything, but now when we hover over it, it's going to reflect that state in time. All right, that's it for those two little basic things. Let's move on. Let's switch on over to a new image. The next one is HDR. And, and what this is doing is allowing you to see on your monitor in HDR and to export in HDR. So what in the world does that mean? That means basically if you have a monitor that is capable of displaying in HDR, like a 5K monitor, you're gonna be able to view more colors and an expanded tonal range. However, if you don't have that high resolution monitor, this isn't gonna really benefit you. It's also not gonna benefit you if you output it to the web or print it. This is just for looking at your own computer and that's all it's gonna do. So you'll notice up here, we've got our regular histogram. So this is our standard definition. And then we've got our HDR over here. And this in the HDR is displaying more information. So if you have an HDR and I have this, I'm able to view this new section of colors that's available to me. Is this gonna make my image look better in most just about anything that I do? Nope. So let's go ahead and take a look. So let's go over here and we're gonna slide down and you'll notice it says HDR limit or stops. You can control this and do three stops, four stops, whatever you wanna do. Now, typically in an HDR image, you're doing something like this. You're gonna take three different images. This is called bracketing. And so you're going to expose one really dark, and this one's gonna be for highlight detail. You're gonna expose one way over, and let's go ahead and get rid of this, for shadow detail, and then you're gonna have another image that's kind of right in the sweet spot, and that's gonna be your main image. And so you're gonna combine these three images to get what we call an expanded tonal range. And then once we've done that, look, a normal monitor is not going to be able to display it. So that's where we come in here to HDR. And in HDR, we can come up here and go visualize in HDR. And what this is doing here is showing us, hey, this little teeny tiny area that we see is the expanded HDR that we see in this window. So I can turn that off and on, okay? Now, on this video, you're not gonna be able to see this expanded range because the video quality is just standard HD. 
you're going to have to take my word for it. And, and when I do these tutorials, if I actually go to full resolution, all my windows would be so small on this iMac that you wouldn't be able to see them. So I'm not even viewing actually in my high resolution at this point anyways. Over here, we've got our standard settings. So I can click on this and I can come in here and apply this. And this is giving me what it will look like in a standard view versus the HDR view that we see up here. So is this really gonna be super helpful? Not really. So this is the new HDR. So if you do have an HDR monitor and you wanna view everything in HDR, this is a new option available in Lightroom. Let's go ahead and move on. So the next one we're gonna go to is we're gonna go back to this woman. Actually, we can do this blue thing right here. I think this is gonna work just as well. So we've got this wedding couple here, and this is just a raw file that hasn't been toned. Let's go ahead and slide up here, and we'll change our white balance to auto. That looks a little bit better. So we're gonna slide down to Color Mixer. Now Color Mixer has been here forever, but now we have this new thing called Point Color. So if I click Point Color, you'll notice we've got this little point, and I'm gonna come over here and click on this, and then click on the blue. And basically I'm saying, hey, this is the color in the image that I want you to pay attention to. This is going to now allow us to change that specific color. In this image, only areas that we have blue are here, 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 and actually there's a little blue up here. So it's gonna make it pretty easy. It's when we adjust this color, it's only gonna happen in that location just like we had in the color mixer before, we've got hue, which is the color, the saturation, so the vibrancy or lack of vibrancy. Let me show you how this works. So we can go over here, we can change the color of the color. We can change the saturation. It would almost go to black and white and then go to super neon so we can control that color saturation. Luminosity is the brightness so we can make that color brighter or we can make that color darker. Down here, we have a range selector. So just think of it, how sensitive do you want this to be? If you look at this, there's like a dark blue here and a light blue here and a lighter blue here. We can control that by sliding this slider. We can click here to see the range which it's affecting, right? So it's turned everything black and white that it's not affecting and then everything in this blue color, it's affecting. So now I can slide this slider and in real time, it's showing me what it's selecting and not selecting. You can see it both here and live as we select it. So this will allow us to change basically the tolerance of that blue. We're gonna go ahead here and click off the visual and come back up here. Now, if you do want to select multiple colors, you can do that. So this isn't the greatest image for selecting multiple colors but basically we could come in here, click this again, go in, pick a new color, and then we have the option to adjust that color inside of the image. So this is the new point color inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now the last thing that we're gonna take a look at here is probably gonna be people's favorite. So let's slide on over here to this image that we have. I'm gonna go ahead and reset this because I was kind of playing around with it earlier. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the horizon line in this because it's driving me nuts, I can't stand it. So let's go ahead and rotate this so it's a little more level and that looks a whole lot better. Let's slide on up. We're gonna open up our shadows just a little bit. And let's take a look at the new depth blur. So we can slide on down. You'll see there's this new thing. It's called lens blur, not depth blur, but essentially it's depth blur just like in Adobe Photoshop. And this is early access, meaning it's in its beta form. It's not the finished version. And one of the things that they have when they have those 
is the option here to add feedback on whether you like it or you don't like it or things that they should change. So the first thing we would need to do is come up here and just hit apply to turn this on. And you're gonna see, remember this uses AI. It can take a long time to go in effect because it's gotta go offsite computers that do AI and then come back to you. So if you have a slow internet connection, it might take a little bit. You can see down here, we've got something that looks like some crude version of a histogram. And this is our depth blur, all right? And the way depth blur works is we first have a blur amount. Let's go ahead and open up more of this so we can see it. And then down here, you'll notice there's this rectangle, all right? So this is the area that the computer thinks should be in focus, okay? The way a depth blur works is it creates something called a depth mask, all right? So it's knowing that this is kind of foreground, this is our background, and this is our midground. And basically what we're looking at is depth of field, all right? So our field, let's say we focused on our subject, is right here. The depth of the field is what we see in focus in front of and behind our subject. We can control that now. So this is very similar if you've had an iPhone, you have the portrait mode and it blurs things out. Essentially, it's doing basically the same thing, but you have a whole lot more control over it. So we can come in here and we can manually adjust that depth. I can come in here and grab that little bar there and I can slide this in on both sections. And now what I'm doing is I'm controlling that depth. Now, when I did that, I can see the hair starting to get a little out of focus. So I can slide this around and change. So if I want the focus to be in the foreground of the image, I can change it to here. If I want it to be in the background of the image, I can slide it this way. We also have the ability to do it on the subject. So if we have a subject, we can click a subject and the computer automatically recognize them and it's using that depth that location. I can also select a point by clicking this little guy right here and we'll come over here and I can say, hey, right here on the hair, that's where I want the key focus point to be. And you can see it's narrowed it down even more there. And then it's adding the blur to that image. So now you can see the background is blurred out and we have some blur in the foreground. We can control that blur amount by sliding this little slider and it will add more blur or less blur. Let's go ahead and knock the blur all the way up so we get the most out of it. So you can see now we've really blurred the background. We're still sharp here and we're blurred out here. We're gonna move on back over to this image here because I think this is gonna work pretty good. So let's go ahead and apply the blur to our subjects. We'll give it a little bit to work its magic. We're gonna go ahead and just click on the subject. It should be able to recognize them. In this case, we can also come in here and just click like I said before. It gives us more narrow depth of field, it seems, when you click the point versus the subject. If we wanna visualize where the depth of field is, we can click on this, and these colors conform to these colors that we see over here. So we've kinda of got these pinks and all this stuff and the dark colors in the back. You'll notice down here we have focus and blur. So we can click on focus and we can control that focus. So we can control the size of the focus, all right? The feather and the flow. And what that means is if I want to add to it. So just like anything, I can come in here and I could paint into this area and I'm changing the depth map and I'm adding this area to still stay in focus. So let's say I only wanted to add the blur to the background. I can come in here and apply this color is that. If I wanna change the blur, like we had an area that didn't get enough blur, I could come in here and I could paint this blur in to add more blur to this area. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that. So let's go ahead. We've got our image, we've got our blur. I'm gonna go ahead and boost it all the way up. And you'll notice right here, we have something called bokeh. We can control the amount of bokeh in that out of focus area in the background. So let's go ahead and boost that all the way up. So we're getting a little bit more of it. And then right here, we can change the type of bokeh that we get. 
So I can come over here and click on this one. This is just a standard bubble bokeh. And you can see how that affected it in the background and easily added bokeh. We can come in here and do an old lens, which is a pentagon shape. So we can add a pentagon bokeh. We can do the donut bokeh, which sort of looks like a ring light. It looks odd, not a big fan of it. And over here, we've got cat's eye. So we can click on the cat's eye and get that cat's eye bokeh in the background. Look, this works really well. I'm a big fan of this, but is this anything new to the Adobe suite? Not really. We've had this in Adobe Photoshop in the neural engine for a long time. So if you work in both Lightroom and Photoshop, I would suggest you probably do this type of stuff in Photoshop, not inside of Lightroom, because you can do it as a smart object. You'll have a lot of control over it, and you can probably do it later in the stage. If you're just working in Lightroom, hey, this is wonderful. We've got some new options. The one I'm not really a big fan of here is this color mixer point color. Because yes, it lets you isolate a color and work on it, but if it's anywhere else in the image, we're still gonna be using it. And my problem is we can do this in Photoshop and it works a whole lot better and we have way more control over that aspect in it. So that's what's new in Adobe Lightroom Classic. If you found this video helpful and could give me a thumbs up, that would be great. If you have any comments or questions, you can always leave those below and don't forget to subscribe.